is transcript a virus? This is the most commonly debated topic in the comment section on my most popular videos on the channel. Well, I'm gonna show you how to prove for yourself whether it is or isn't a virus. Nico knows tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico knows tech, number one channel with the news on check. If you're not familiar with Tronscript, let me tell you. It's an automation script that I've used for the basis of my Remove Any Virus video tutorials and they've garnered more than 3.7 million views combined, making them the most popular videos for removing malware on YouTube. And with all of this success has come some intense scrutiny. I mean, why wouldn't you suspect that it's got to be too good to be true? It's literally one click and it automatically removes practically any virus from Windows fixes windows, soups up your performance, and it's absolutely free, who wouldn't think it's too good to be true? So in this video, I'm not just gonna sit here and explain to you that it is in fact safe and that it's not a virus. I'm gonna give you the tools to make that determination for yourself. Now I'm not gonna come down on the people that are commenting saying that Tronscript is a virus because I don't think they're trolls. I think they actually believe it is in fact a virus because they're trusting someone telling them that it's a virus. And I'm gonna show you exactly who is telling you that Tronscript is a virus. Be sure to watch to the end where I show you a ransomware virus called Chaos Destroy a Windows Machine. I've already, here's where I downloaded it. You can see it's in pink. I downloaded Tron from the Tronscript Reddit, where I always recommend people to download from. They're the ones that made it. And then I downloaded the US slash EU, which I already have downloaded right here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and upload it to Virus Total, and we're gonna see what all the virus scanners of the world say about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here, open it. And now it's uploading it to Virus Total, where it'll be scanned by pretty much every antivirus company in the business. Uh, you should definitely bookmark this. This is not where I'm gonna be showing you whether or not it is a virus or not, because this is kind of a tool for professionals, but anyway. So Tronscript has actually been flagged as malicious by seven vendors, seven antivirus companies, by AliCloud and all of these relatively unknown scanners, but also Avira, Gridnasoft, and then Microsoft. So this is where a lot of you guys are coming up with the saying that Tronscript is a virus and blaming me for infecting you, which I didn't, is because Microsoft is actually saying that Tronscript is a virus now. Why do I think that they're doing that? Well, I'm really bad for their business. Um, Tronscript greatly blocks a lot of Microsoft's telemetry and spying and information gathering on everyone who uses Windows. And I'm a very big privacy advocate. So blocking Tronscript is very much in favor of Microsoft. So, but anyway, I'm not gonna just tell you that this is in fact not a virus. I'm gonna show you how you can make the determine for yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to any run or any dot run and you can get the link in the description or you can just type any dot run in your browser and it's gonna take you to this interactive malware analysis platform. Now in order to use any dot run, you will need to create a free account and you will need a business email. A regular Google email will not work but if you don't have a business email, it's not the end of the world, you can join their Discord, which I'll go ahead and link that in the description, and they can set you up with access. Or you can just watch me here, either way. Now, I ran into a problem trying to test Tron because when I ran a new analysis here, and then I chose here to upload, where I upload whatever malware or program we wanna to test to see if it's infected, and it's larger than 100 megabytes. So. It's okay, I was able to just extract it here on my computer and upload the things that I already know everybody's alerting on, such as uh, R-Kill and TDSS Killer. Something funny kind of happened too, because when I went in here to upload, and I went into the Tron folders, which this, when you double click on this, this isn't actually Tron, even though the antiviruses were alerting on it. This is just a self-extracting zip file that breaks out these two folders here. And in here is all the guts of where we need to work on things. So where all the alerts are coming is from this folder here in stage zero prep, and it's these two babies here, R-Kill and TDSS Killer. These are two types of scanners. R-Kill checks for root kits and anything kind of blocking in the background. It alerts hardcore on R-Kill and also TDSS Killer. So when I went in to upload TDSS Killer, there was nothing here. Well, lo and behold, my own antivirus ESET alerted on it right here Riskware TDSS Killer A dot application. Why is it Riskware according to ESET, which has very low false positives, and they're on my side. They they sponsor me. 
it's because TDSS Killer is manufactured by Kaspersky, which is banned in the United States right now. So it's been added to a lot of lists. <clears throat> anyway, I went ahead and restored it. And they're like, are you sure you want to do this? So I restored it and it's here. So now I'm going to upload TDSS Killer first. And then I'm going to have it load from the desktop. This gets tons. My antivirus alerted on TDSS Killer. So I believe you, you guys are getting um, alerts. I'm gonna run on Windows 10 here. You can select your operating system. I'm choosing Windows 10. And then I'm opening the duration up faster, longer rather. Then I'm gonna run a public analysis and we'll see if this thing is actually a virus. All right, it's loading up Windows for us. And then it should auto execute TDSS killer. It's already running it over here. And it's run TDSS killer for us, the executable that I ran. And right here we have a Kaspersky window. It's asking us to accept a user license agreement. I'm gonna go ahead and click accept. We have one threat over here. It's a pro signature, so we can't see what it is. Let's see if it's got any malicious traffic, nothing. No malicious traffic. I'm, I'm assuming this is Mimi Cats has been detected. Let's see what that is. While we observe some malicious use of MCATs by adversaries, the majority of detected activity was a result of some kind of testing. So the analysis done by uh, this company has said that it's sometimes used maliciously, but it's also used for testing. What are we doing right now? This is a scanner. We're running a test. So yeah, this is a very invasive scanner that scans for rootkits, which are supposedly undetectable. Well, TDSS killer can detect a lot of rootkits. Now we're gonna check our kill. I'm gonna go over to new analysis. I'm gonna leave it on Windows 10 and I'm gonna upload our kill, which is the 64 bit right here. <clears throat> Same thing, I'm gonna put it on the desktop. All right, and I'm gonna run public analysis. All right, it's running Windows again for us and immediately running rkill.exe. Okay, this is the window that pops up. It's from bleepingcomputer.com, which is actually a trusted resource for uh, tools and, uh, and virus scanners, a lot of things. Um, they're the ones that made this. And what it did was, is it found no malware processes to kill, no, mal no malware services, but over here, it ran some 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 tasks. It ran conhost. Let's see if it did any DNS requests. This is all Windows stuff. Nope, nothing malicious. Everything's a check mark here. I'm gonna wait a couple of seconds. So what this did, <clears throat> what Arkill does is it checks the background if you're an infected machine, and checks for any malicious software running in the background and automatically closes them because oftentimes if a virus is running in the background, it'll prevent you from scanning anything or lock up your machine. So that's all this thing does. And then it does some basic virus scans. And the only thing it found was that disable remote monitoring was changed in the registry. That's it. All right, we can close this. Nothing's happening. CPU usage dropped to zero. And that's it. Nothing broken, no detections. So our kill is not a virus. It's very invasive because it checks what's running in the RAM and a lot of antivirus scanners will say, hey, what the heck is that? You can't do that. Let's run another scan. We'll actually check, let's close this one first. Let's check another part of Tronscript. We want to upload, let's find else what else we can do in here. Um, McAfee Stinger, well, it's McAfee. No one thinks that is. Let's check Process Killer. People might, that looks like a deadly virus. Process killer. I don't want it killing my processes. No. Okay. We're going to go ahead and go to the desktop there. Leave everything the same. Run public analysis. Now process killer is very, uh, what I call promiscuous. It kind of breaks some rules. Um, it really checks what's going on in the background and it automatically can kill a whole bunch of processes that are stopping you from scanning, maybe malicious processes. Okay, whitelist could not be found. That's okay. Process killer. And then this looks kind of sus. It looks like a virus pop-up. 
I'm not gonna lie, it, it's very, it's open source. It's just made by one guy, I think. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and kill all unnecessary processes. And screen went black, spooky. And then some other processes launched. See if any connections went out. Nothing yet, no threats. So yeah, I can understand why people think this is a virus. It looks scary. It's got this big red X and it's called Process Killer and has a really cheaply made GUI. Of course, this was like Windows 7, Windows XP era, almost outdated. Then I close it, nothing happening. CPU usage drops back to zero. It's no longer running in the background. No new processes. But you don't need to stop right there. You can actually test anything you download in any.run. Watch this. Now I'm gonna upload something that I know is a virus. And this could be anything. Let's pretend that you downloaded a game, someone sent you a file, and you don't know if it's a virus or not, and you don't know who to trust. Go over here and new analysis, and then just upload the file right here. You choose the operating system right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and upload. And the one that I have that I'm gonna upload is called testserver.exe. I know this is a virus, but let's pretend that this is some program that you downloaded and you don't know if it's infected or not. I'm gonna select desktop so I don't lose it. And then drag the duration out. You might not have as much duration as I do. I have a pro account, um, which is not free, but the free one you get 60 seconds. And that's usually long enough to test if something's gonna break your computer. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and leave everything the same and go ahead and click run public analysis. All right, and it should open up WinRAR so I can uh, extract this file here. It did. I'll go ahead and extract this and put it on the desktop. The password for all infected files that you download through any.run and most repositories will be the word infected, just like this. Go ahead and click OK. And that's to protect you. You don't want to like execute viruses on accident. All right, and this one has a dot bin at the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename it so I can double click and infect this virtual machine. We're gonna break Windows real quick. Yes, I'm sure. Thanks, Windows, you're great. Oh, great, it's a heart icon, it's gotta be safe. Okay, I double clicked on it and we got stuff going on over here. And I already know this virus, this one's kind of a fun one. Okay, right off the bat, you don't see anything happening here. Oh, but we got test server going over here. It is detected as malicious. It's got chaos. Chaos is a nasty bit of ransomware. All right, we're gonna go over here to connections, see who we're talking out to. Don't know yet. DNS requests, nothing malicious. But wait, something cool is about to happen. Bada bing! Okay, this, this note has just popped up. This is to scare you. Um, let's read it. This was dedicated to one of the only Nathan um, Nathan Chu, an amazing baseball player who lived in Cali most of his life. Um, specifically, oh my gosh. So it's doxing somebody. Yeah, this is, this is revenge. This is terrible. Yeah, and it's asking for money or else uh, he wants $200 or else it's, you're not gonna get your files back. Okay, and I think over here, yep, everything's been encrypted. Okay, all of our files over here are now encrypted. We can't use them anymore, they're useless. They've all been encrypted. So while I was reading that note, which was kind of probably a smoke screen, um, while I'm reading this pop-up note in this story, all my files have been encrypted. Everything on the desktop's encrypted. Let's check if there's anything in documents. documents yep everything over here is encrypted with different types of um, of uh, of different extensions and you can't decrypt them this is encrypted with uh, AES 256 it's pretty much not decryptable for the most part um, and all we can really see is the ransom letter demanding money and we also have a time limit so yeah nasty stuff you wouldn't want to download that thinking it's a game. So yeah, this is how you can be for sure. Cause what if this didn't, uh, what if your, your antivirus didn't detect it? What if virus totals never seen it before? So yeah, virus total is 70 plus virus scanners that can test it and see if anyone else detects it. But there's no better way to be sure than to test it in a safe environment. 
Even the background picture has been encrypted, so now we have a black wallpaper. Wow, you made it to the end of the video? Wow, nice job. I know this video went longer than my normal videos, but I wanted to be thorough and give you guys both an explanation as well as something useful that you can use in your everyday computing life. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like it, please smash that like button and maybe subscribe for more content. I shall see you next time.